Ah, and now for something completely different. Welcome to the Commune Summit, where in an act of visual literalism, not really seen since Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling video, I present to you the summit of the world of well-being. What qualifies you to do that? And what could possibly qualify me to do it? What I'll tell you though, is as a participant in this summit, I feel incredibly grateful because we're gonna be watching great teachers, people that I've had the privilege of meeting and talking to, like Deepak, who needs no surname, one of the single named gurus of the world, Byron Katie's gonna be participating, Wim Hof, a, a kind of uh, Avengers ensemble of mentors, gurus flocking from around the world as if some clarion call has been sounded. Ah, the rapture, the opposite of Armageddon, the unapocalypse. Suddenly now the teachers are assembling, accumulating as if some tsunami were about to arrive and those that are attuned head to the mountaintop or indeed to the summit, the commune summit. The kind of teachings that are available to us here from Byron Katie, who I've had the privilege of meeting. If you've done Byron Katie's course yet, Byron Katie who has a practicable, applicable method for approaching your neuroses. A woman who found epiphany in the clutches of a stag beetle or a cockroach, a cockroach at the end of her toe, took her to the next level. What does the beetle mean in mythology? Is it a harbinger of transformation? Is it a skiffle band in the 1960s ushering in a new wave of consciousness via popular culture? It could mean literally anything. But when I met Byron Katie, what I found her to be was a very sort of lucid and illumined teacher, a very beautiful and clear woman. You can tell, can't you, when you're in the presence of someone who's undergone the suffering, who's undergone the awakening. I've spent some time too talking to Deepak Chopra. In fact, directly after this summit, I'm gonna scale down that mountain, not with any equipment, with nothing than meditative commitment. That's what's gonna get me down there uh, to talk to Deepak. What another fantastic teacher. I suppose what this offers us is a holistic approach to well-being. Think of what that encompasses. Mental health, self-improvement, personal development. If you're interested in the esotericism of Eastern mysticism rendered in a way that's easy to understand and underwritten by a medical degree, you're gonna love Deepak. If you want to hear the heartening, warm, authoritative, feminine voice of the well-being movement, you'll tune right into Byron Katie. If you want to feel the Thor-like thud of icy education, why there stands Wim Hof, probably naked, as he pounds his mighty chest and invites the ice. The cold is my teacher, the cold is my teacher, bellows Wim Hof. Ah, there in the ice, he learned so much, didn't he? Repelling viral infection through breath, finding a new transcendent, some kind of Nordic Loki sadhu there off the tangent of grief, discovering new branches of consciousness. Because I know you, you've felt pain too. You've been through suffering too. Many of these teachers who I've had the privilege of meeting and talking to have known great despair and great unhappiness. And often, and this is heartening for me to understand, that pain, that anguish can be the initiation, the wound, through the wound can come the salve, through our pain and suffering, we can find new territories, new terrain. Of course, this does involve being open to new ideas. My rubric for understanding whichever teacher it is I'm interfacing with or have the privilege in bathing in the knowledge of is the 
12-step recovery program. For me, I have to continually acknowledge that I have a problem, that my life becomes unmanageable, that it's possible that the situation can change, that my situation won't change unless I open my mind to teaching, that I have to be willing to inventory, confess and share to another, to myself and to a higher power, the exact nature of my wrongs. Having taken a thorough inventory, I can usually spot patterns, traits, attributes and defects that have continually led me to particular types of suffering again and again reiterating and reinstantiating original traumatic patterns from each of these teachers I've learned techniques to change transcend and transform pain that easy mundane alchemy of ordering that which hurts you into that which heals you. It's accessible to me and it's accessible to you. Often I feel somewhat fraudulent when I sit upon this forum, then I remember that my qualification is not that I think that I'm better than anybody else, but that I know I'm worse, that I know I have more of a tendency to get attached to material objects, that I have more of a tendency to be motivated by primal desires, s uh, sexual yearning, competitiveness, uh, aggression. These things loom large in me. I am many, I am legion, I am a tribe and if I'm not very careful, if I don't select the right teachers, the right methods, the right education, the wrong chief takes control of the situation. I've got to be very, very cautious. Pain is my spur. Suffering reminds me continually. Because of some of the methods I've taught, I've learned to spot the problem a little further off on the horizon. Uh-oh, we may be in trouble, Russell. Like the alarm system goes off a little bit earlier now for me because pain made me teachable. I don't now wait for tragedy and travesty to be looming up in my grill before I become willing to change. I used to get my epiphanies in police cells and accident and emergency wards, ER rooms, I suppose in your language. Now it's the mild murmuring in the pit of my stomach that tells me something ain't quite right. Pain can be the touchstone for me. My first lessons were learned from junkies and scumbags and people hunched in doorways. Even when active, even when in the condition, even when in the malady, it was the spiritual truth that I saw. But because like you most likely, I live in a culture and from a culture, was born to a culture that's not interested in the invisible truths, but only interested in the ongoing glut of outer material pleasure, the accumulation and accretion of further realizations of the problem. It's very difficult to get to truth. For me, luckily, as a smackhead and a crackhead, I got smashed down pretty fast, pretty frequently, pretty low, and I became as I've said to you already, teachable. The thing that I was looking for materially, the thing that I was looking for in pleasure and self-satisfaction and forms of distraction and numbness and escape could be found by choosing the spiritual life. And the chances are, if you're watching this and you've sat through the first bit, you know, you've sat through the mad bit two minutes ago and some of this ranting and raving, you're probably looking for something too. Where is it? Where is it? What does the wanting want? If the truth was in your head, you would have found it by now. Whatever it is you are trying to realise, you clearly need some kind of guide. That's what was true for me. Various teachers leading me through the rambling, preambulant pathways that always led back to the pain. It's not possible, I don't think, to break the synaptic patterns by continuing to walk the same psychological hallways, eventually to be taught is to accept an external influence, an external code. I'm forever finding myself, I'm going to do this, this is how I'm going to solve this situation. Oh, I don't think that's wise, Russell, says the teacher, says the mentor. Perhaps you should consider this. And now, because, you know, life has shown me how infrequently my instinct instincts and impulses are correct, particularly when I'm riled up, I'm willing to listen to those teachers. Now that's not to say that I'm plain dumb. In other people's lives, 
by God, I'm smart. You ask me some advice, I know exactly what's wrong with your life. There's no problem that you could tell me that I wouldn't happily sit down with pen and paper and try and resolve for you using the 12 step method. Oh, I'm brilliant. But my life is an absolute bloody shambles. I think that you could fly me over to the Middle East and I'll wrap up the Palestine-Israel conflict in about an hour. But you try getting me to park properly. It's absolute murder. Although there is, there is some shit that I will not eat. Listen, the modern world's great. We all love technology. You're watching this on a phone or a computer and I'm talking to you down a wonderful camera. No one's arguing with technology. No one's arguing with medicine. But there are certain archaic truths that we've neglected. There are certain wisdom that's present in all nature, in all systems, continually trying to be born through us. Oneness is trying to be born through us. So by virtue of that fact, it's impossible for us to get there alone. It's impossible for me to achieve anything of meaning alone. Through connection, through being willing to learn, through being willing to surrender, by gathering as many resources as I can, by being open to as many voices as possible, I have a chance not only of surviving, which is where it, this began for me, it like began with, well, I just don't want to die. I don't want to kill myself or kill anybody else or keel over as a result of my substance misuse has now become a kind of uh, open and optimistic leaning to the light and understanding uh, something beyond certainty that there is absolute beauty, that there is absolute love. And if it's possible and plausible for me to realise that and to receive that, there's simply no way that it's not possible for you. I don't know under what circumstances you're watching this now, perhaps. I hope, I like to think this, this has been in a time capsule somewhere and we're a thousand years in the future and you're watching this through your holographic eye holes or, you know, perhaps more likely you're in some sort of spiritual despair and unhappiness. And uh, the, I have been taught and I've seen that the pain is the beginning of change and that I've come to even, not only accept, but sort of welcome the pain, try and understand it. As dear old Rumi, God love him, would say, welcome these visitors, welcome these guests. To be human is to suffer a little bit, isn't it? It's strange to be here in a body, knowing everyone I love is gonna die one day. So if I don't connect to something bigger than that, something universal and pure, I don't think that I can be here anymore. And look at where I am. So beautiful here, sat at this desk, on this precipice, in this moment, this exact moment at this particular summit. I hope these teachings and these teachers are valuable to you. Hopefully you're not starting from such a low rung as me. You know, I mean, you can operate a computer. You've not eaten your phone. Those are all things that I struggle with. I hope that this, uh, is an edifying experience for you. I hope it's a nutritious experience for you because you deserve it. I wish you well as you take this important step forward and make sure it is forward because backward there's a literal cliff edge. Thank you.